This is Alex from the Duran, and today we're going to be talking about Steve Bannon taking on George Soros, the Open Society Foundation, and the EU bureaucrats in Brussels. So uh, Steve Bannon uh, did an interview with the Daily Beast, and he announced that he's going to be starting his own foundation to rival that of the George Soros Open Society Foundation in Brussels. He's going to call the foundation the movement. And now this has the EU bureaucrats, technocrats, autocrats crapping in their pants. Why? Well, because George Soros has got them on his payroll pretty much. All these guys are bought out by George Soros, by the Open Society Foundation, by the Soros uh, global worldview that there should be no borders, um, there should be open immigration, no religion, no culture, no pride in country, none of that. All that should be washed away and wiped away. And now Steve Bannon is coming in and saying he's going to create a foundation that is the exact opposite of what Soros has been pushing for the last decade, two decades in Europe and the chaos that Soros has been sowing in Europe. Steve Bannon is coming in and he's pretty much announcing that he's going to reverse it. And of course, that means a lot of the payrolls of the current EU autocrats and technocrats sitting in Brussels, living on these fat paychecks, living off of the money that Soros hands out is in jeopardy. And so you're going to watch a couple of videos on Steve Bannon in this announcement. One is from Euronews. Remember, Euronews is pro-EU. And in the video, they actually state that a lot of the Brussels uh, parliament members, a lot of the Brussels, Brussels officials are afraid that Steve Bannon is going to actually start pushing for people in countries, for EU citizens to actually have pride in their country. And that's a big problem for the EU autocrats and technocrats and bureaucrats. And the other video is from RT, and they actually interview a Syriza, a Greek government official from Syriza, Syria's radical left, Syria, Syriza is radical left. And this guy's crapping in his pants because the last thing he wants to see is anything conservative or conservative right actually competing for mind share, competing for votes in Europe. Up until now, the liberal left has had a monopoly in Europe and Steve Bannon is looking to change that. Remember, Syriza is radical left, they're for open borders, they're for mass immigration, they're for the, the cancellation, the abolition of religion, the abolition of culture, the abolition of history, the abolition of any ethnic pride. And so you have this extreme radical left is really crapping in their pants about what Steve Bannon is intending to do. Check out the videos, guys. If you like it, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on the notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. And remember, go to the Duran shop. Help support the Duran. Until next time, take care. The state of Europe and how he thinks Europe is going to progress. Well, now he's gone one step further. And in an interview with the Daily Beast, he says he's going to set up a foundation here in Europe called the Movement. And the idea is to stir right-wing populist revolt across Europe with uh, a view to building um, a right-wing group in Brussels. Now, people are telling us from Brussels that this is getting a lot of talk. People are talking about it, not just on social media, but obviously in the corridors of power there as well. This is a potentially a big headache for the European Union ahead of the elections in 2019. But Steve Bannon's plan, I suppose you could say, is to stir up the kind of um, uh, the kind of fever that perhaps swept Donald Trump into office, this idea of taking back control of borders, this idea of being individual nation states and putting your country first. Steve Bannon obviously was Donald Trump's former chief advisor in the White House before uh, exiting that role. Um, this has got a lot of people talking, establishment figures in the European Union, you could call them, Guy Verhofstadt, for example, um, backing the social media campaign that's come out of this called hashtag Ban Bannon. This is an image uh, shared uh, by Guy Verhofstadt saying uh, Steve Bannon's far right vision and attempt to import Trump's hateful politics to our continent will be rejected by decent, uh, decent Europeans. He's calling on here hashtag Generation Europe to stop Bannon. We must stop Bannon as Guy Verhofstadt starts. David Lammy in the UK calls uh, Steve Bannon, um, I believe he calls him, uh, yes, morally bankrupt and delusional if he thinks his think tank is going to sway things. But there are voices in Europe who see Steve Bannon's move as uh, standing up for what they believe in. And also people taking issue with this characterization of Steve Bannon as right wing. Uh, Martin commenting on our Euronews article saying far right 
is nonsense, not liberal, is what you mean. And also Mike Bates pointing out that George Soros has sponsored liberal causes through a similar uh, foundation in the past. So he says he's just doing the same uh, to give a Hofstadt as your best mate Soros. So what are your views on this? Is Steve Bannon in need in Europe or is he stirring up bad feelings? You can let us know. George Soros has spent billions to promote leftist ideas for years. For example, funding pro-EU campaigns by supporting a second Brexit referendum. We asked MEP Stelios Kologlu from the Syriza party what he thinks of Bannon's initiative. What is wrong with promoting an alternative? Does it not challenge views so you get debate, you get conversation instead of name-calling? People in the United States uh... Uh, are asking, follow the money. So where the money? How, who is going to finance this obscure movement, which is a movement rather for the division of Europe and not for the unity of Europe? Right. Could that argument not be made to George Soros as well? Why shouldn't these parties and groups who have support of large swathes of the population get some help from the outside, the same way that the left has been getting help from Soros and other like-minded billionaires this is not the point yes if uh, we know where the money comes from they can finance themselves but they they're financing themselves for what they are in favor for the rich they are in favor uh, you know for the privileged they are in favor for the you the christians well, well that's but, not uh, fair really on the working class delius is it there's a lot of working class people who fear that their jobs are being taken by possibly by immigrants possibly by other forces at play and they're voting for who they think will be able to solve those concerns and at the moment across europe in many countries it's not the left they need an alternative well yes uh, th this is uh, this is a uh, a problem uh, shortcoming of the left uh, of course, I admit that. There is no, you know, it's v but it's very easy uh, to be demagogue, uh, you know, to say, uh, to find scapegoats, whether the scapegoat is Mr. Soros or the scapegoat is the refugees. They are white uh, workers, they are voting for the extreme right, and uh, we saw it in, in the United States and also in Britain with the Brexit, but now they regret it. That, that's, the, that's the result. You don't have to be an extreme right winger to have views on immigration, do you? When you're seeing so many people coming from North Africa and sub-Saharan Africa into your nation that they did not vote for. Uh, well, if you see so many people uh, coming from uh, different places, you have to, to ask why. Yeah. And the people, you know, they are coming from, uh, for instance, from uh, Middle East, which are the people are uh, political refugees. There are people, we, United States, Great Britain, and other people bombarded, you know. They destroyed the countries, and now they are denying any, any, any historical and political responsibility. And this is the same. And the same goes for the poor people, not refugees, but immigrants coming from Africa. Who devastated Africa for decades and centuries? Uh, you know, the rich European countries. They have to take their historical responsibility for that.